All right, hey everybody, this is going to be our inaugural quick proteomics bites on how to analyze your data. I was hoping to have these be oh, under five minutes, so <laughs> let's see how I do. Um, so today we're going to show you a quick example on how to find proteins in your data set and look at them quickly. Um, so right now I'm looking at a unpublished data set that we did on COVID swabs. Um, I just wanted to do this because it was easy to pick out the viral proteins. Um, this is just a experiment um, where we took six negative swabs and six positive swabs and extracted the proteins out. Um, Pandy from the Mayo Group actually has a very good data set on this if you want to see something in press. Um, but currently this is not published. Um, so let's try and find our viral proteins. Let's see if they're in there. So we loaded the samples. Um, we want to organize by condition. So we go to tree view, um, order runs by condition replicate. That will put all of the negative samples and all of the positive samples together. So let's see if we could find our viral proteins. And why is this here? Come on, stop it. <laughs> okay, so um, the first one we're going to look at is our spike protein. So we go down to our grid view, um, and all we have to do is type in the accession number here, P0. It's a zero, P0, DTC2. There is our SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. Um, you can see that it's mostly in the positive samples. We see one um, peak here in the negative samples, and we're gonna look at that um, in a second. So basically, I'm gonna turn off the log scale. You can see there's a big signal for a negative and mostly they're in our positive samples, which is what we would expect. Okay, so let's look at these. Um, usually what I'd like to do is look at the positive, the numbers first with the biggest. So let's look at, well, let's look at the positive one. Um, up here, you can see the coverage of our protein. We have quite a few peptides if we go back and hit column chooser right click here column chooser number of peptides drag that into the box and you can see we have identified 18 peptides um, for the spike protein and uh, across all of our swabs which is really good um, so we can click on these numbers it shows us the coverage the green are the peptides that are significantly identified. The ones in red have a Q value of greater than 0 0.05. Um, and the ones in orange are kind of ambiguous. We don't see very many orange ones, but we do see some red and we see some green. And so you could kind of look at the data here. We see some ones of varying quality, some that look very good. And we could actually make this a little bigger. And some not so good, some really, really good. I mean, look at that, that's beautiful, huh? And some not so good. But mostly they're, this data is just really, really pretty. Okay, so let's look at the negative sample and it shouldn't be there. Maybe this person was positive. Uh, maybe it's a false signal or let's see. Okay, so we're gonna look at the, we're gonna click on this box that says 11, and we're gonna look at the coverage, and you can see they're mostly all red and orange, which is not good, but is what we expect if this person really didn't have the spike proteins in there. But there is one green one, so let's look at that one. And that looks like a pretty good signal, um, but let's write this down. N I D G Y F K. And we're going to go back to the tree view and change this from identification to assay peptide sequence. And then we're going to type in the peptide sequence N I D G Y 
fk, bam. And we see that they're mostly in the positives, and then we see this one in the negative. So let's look at one in the positive sample. That's looking pretty good, um, about what you would expect. Um, you see a nice overlap between the MS1 and MS2. You see we're not getting enough scans across the peak. This is kind of older data, so it's actually better now. Um, but you can see very good quality, I believe it, in the positive sample. So we can look at this positive sample. And here, I believe that too. Good uh, p-values. That looks not as good. Um, let's look at this negative sample that it was in. It was a pretty high quanti quality quantity, so let's see what it looks like. So we'll go to our negative sample. One precursor, you can see it highlights it for you. Um, this looks good. This looks good. That actually looks really good, huh? So I have, I have complete confidence that this peptide is in the sample. Beautiful data, nice and, nice and tight. Let's look at the Acrox run, um, cross run RT accuracy. Um, let's see, so here's our positive samples. So you can see these have a retention, an aligned retention time of around 17 minutes. This one, however, is way up here at 27 minutes. So that's a big red flag. This is our negative sample. The data look good but the retention time is way different. So we click on this, let's see if this will work. Um, let's see, let's go back and click on MS2, MS1, uh, run specific, MS1, and we'll look at our positive samples again. So that looks pretty good. Uh, retention time around 19 minutes. Uh, retention time around 19 minutes. Let's look at that negative sample up here, which was here. Uh, retention time around 27 minutes. That's way different. Um, I don't know. What does that mean? That's kind of a red flag. Um, let's look at the cross run. Um, cross run, let's see, MS2 alignment. Let's not look at that. Let's look at the XIC graph. I mean, it looks pretty good in the negative sample, doesn't it? But our retention time is pretty far off. I don't know what that means. Um, so I'm pretty confident in these. This looks like a really good signal. Uh, but the retention time is off. Why is that? Maybe the that run, oh, I don't know. Maybe that run, the peaks were shifted, but it doesn't look like it. If you look at um, the tick overlay plot, everything looked pretty good. Um, you can see some samples had less than the other. Look at normalization, yeah, it looks okay. Um, so anyway, that's it. That's how to find your proteins in your sample. Still kind of ambiguous as we see one peptide and our negative sample that clearly had a good transition, although the retention time was far off. The other ones, why is that? I don't know. Um, anyway, this is kind of how to look at your data and do it in more detail and kind of scrutinize the data. In this case, I really don't know what to make out of it. The signals look really good, but the retention time's um, off. Um, I wonder what else we can look at here. Um, I mean, maybe if we look at, let's see. Well, the ion mo I have to look at the raw data to look at the ion mobility. Maybe ion mobility will help with this. And maybe it won't, but as soon as we find the raw data, maybe I'll do that in the next video. Um, so anyway, thanks for, thanks for watching. Hopefully they'll be quicker. This is just to kind of show you how to find peptides in your data um, and how to scrutinize it and what to do when you have like a kind of ambiguous data for this peptide. I don't really know. I would flag this one as a red flag and say, well, 
It may be in the negative sample. There's some evidence to support it, um, but the retention time's off, so I don't know what to make of it. Okay, thanks everybody. I will see you next time.